It thus is for the Robert H. Jackson Center and this region, and for the Jackson Center's work here and globally, particularly apt and very special to host today's guest, the Chief Justice of the United States, John G. Roberts, Jr. Thank you, Mr. Thank you very Chief. much. Thank you. This center stands as a magnificent monument to this great justice. It has attracted numerous visitors from our court, as you've heard. Exactly 10 years ago yesterday, Chief Justice William Rehnquist presided over the dedication of the center. Rehnquist was, of course, law clerk to Robert Jackson, and as it has been noted, I had the privilege of being law clerk to William Rehnquist. And when I was practicing law, I also carried the briefcase of Barrett Prettyman, another Jackson clerk, also here today. So I feel a special tie to the Jackson Center through those connections, and I am especially proud to share this anniversary celebration. Was Hogan Hartson your number one choice? Or how, did, how did they connect with you? And, and I went to all these big firms, and it was very nice. Uh, uh, but I noticed in most of the firms you go into lawyer, I don't know what your office is like, but you've got either an English. Wonderful. Firm, Where's Dave McInerney? <laughs> You have either a, a, a picture of an English fox hunt or some barrister in a wig on the wall, right? Well, you go to Barrett's office, and he has uh, himself there, as you mentioned, shaking hands with Fidel Castro, with Catherine Ann Porter, with uh, Truman Capote and John Lennon. And it occurred to me that that might be a little more interesting than fox hunting. <laughs> and it turned out I was. And also, Barrett uh, was one of the very few Mm -hmm. specialists in the Supreme Court work at the time, and I knew that that was what I wanted to do, and uh, he said he would uh, be willing to take me on to do it. What did you think of him the first time you met him? I thought he was brighter than hell. <laughs> um, he was ter terribly impressive, and he wanted to do precisely what I was doing, but more importantly, what I wanted to do more of, and he held out a great deal of promise to be able to do that. I was impressed. I'll tell you a funny story about that. Um, a young woman from Virginia Law School came to me and <coughs> said, you know, Mr. Freeman, I'd like to join your appellate group, but I'm just not sure that I can rise in it. Once I get in it, I, is there any place I can go? And I said, just a minute, and I reached over, I pulled out a brief. It was a petition for cert. And uh, <coughs> signing it were me, three other lawyers, and then John G. Roberts, Jr. <laughs> <laughs> I said, don't worry, you can, you can rise. <laughs> Did your first argument? Let's make sure we talk court. about that, though. When we <laughs> opposed each other. Though. Did you really? Oh yes. Oh yeah. yeah. You know something? He, in his first sentence when he got up, I knew I was dead. <laughs> I think learned this from Barrett. You go out and visit the site if anything you want to do. So I was out, and it was in the Green Mountains of Wyoming. And you sent me a postcard. I did. I found a great. <laughs> A postcard that showed you this vast expanse, and I drew and a little I, X on I've it. I've been looking said, for your client. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't found her yet. But, uh, uh, but that, was, that was a lot of fun. And I will tell you that uh, knowing Barrett was going to be on the other side, I worked harder on that case than anyone before or since. Yeah. Can I uh, uh, read something? Sure. Uh, it, it's, uh, it, it's one of my favorite. Um, rebuttals that John has made uh, over the years, and he's made some wonderful ones. But this one was just my favorite. Uh, Justice Kennedy had suggested uh, during the argument that suppose he X'd out a certain paragraph or sentence. And you would have to X out the sentence on page 2A that says the key issue is whether the plaintiff in this case can use her arms, hands, and shoulders, quote, as required by her new job, end quote. I respectfully submit that by the time you get through Xing out all those sentences, 
you should go one step further and X out the opinion as a whole and by holding that it's reversed. <laughs> When you work with somebody like that over a period of years, you come away with a strong impression that he should go up in life to bigger jobs, and he's done it. I mean, your bio is so long. I mean, it's like 18 miles long. I mean, don't you... I mean, I'm, a, I'm old. <laughs> we didn't ask last night, but how did you get to Hogan and Hartson? Well, I had just been clerking through for three justices. And um, so I pretty much had my choice. And uh, I liked everything about the firm. Um, not only the quality of the uh, lawyers, but something about the atmosphere. It didn't seem to be fighting as much as I heard stories about in other firms. And um, there was a generous and genial atmosphere there that uh, appealed to me. Were they all? Were they all at all concerned that you were the son of a federal judge? That once they hired you, they probably didn't know how to know how to deal with you. I heard later that when my name came up to be hired by the firm, Nelson Hartson said no dice, and they said Nelson, for heaven's sakes, the guy clerk for three justices. Yeah, but his old man's a, a judge. If he doesn't work out, we'll never get rid of him. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only, the only thing I was aware of. <laughs> and uh, they, uh, they voted me in uh, despite that. Well, uh, almost 60 years, they haven't figured out how to do that, have they? No, I, uh, that's right. I, they, I, they, he was absolutely right. <laughs> absolutely right. Could never get rid of me.